sounds all right. Welcome to the planning board meeting of Monday, December 3rd. <clears throat> and our first item of business, oh, I feel like I'm echoing, is um, an approval not required plan for 7 Box Mill Road. The applicant? Yes. I am still trying to get the appropriate magnification here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Welcome. Introduce yourself, sir, and let us know what, how Here's we can. Bob Erie from <coughs> Birmingham. I developed Box Mill Road. I'm selling that last lot. We changed some lot lines for two reasons to give them a better side yard rather than that long front yard that encompasses part of the retention area. Uh, and also, I'm going to be coming back here to try and get two more lots off that, but that requires a camera. I think the approval not required is pretty straightforward. All right. Does anybody questions? on the board have any questions? <coughs> Do we have? Is, is there a picture of that? Did I miss? <laughs> Did I miss yeah, that? No, I oh, I got I think it. I think it's in there. Okay, I got it. I got it. And long term, uh, to the chair. Yes. Uh, long term, <coughs> like those lots would be kind of if, if I'm looking in on Box Mill. You'll be somewhere down the right hand side, right? As you go. Right hand side. Right. Is that what we talked about originally? Was it two years ago now? No, we never really dis <coughs> discussed that. We had talked about going down behind where the bigger retention areas with more right. lots. Right. Right. Uh, this is Tom Terry piece of property. We were actually directed to go to the zoning board, which they told us we didn't belong there. We belong at the Panana board. Uh, we're still doing some rep, but we'll be back for that. But that's really not part of this. That's a public hearing. It's more of a, a longer term thing. Right. That garage fixed up nice, by the way. Thank you. It's really nice. I was out there the other day. Anybody else have any questions? No. Georgia, anything from you, from the planner? Uh, nope, nothing on. Somebody like, oh, is there anybody in the public that has any comments on? Nope. Anybody would like to make a motion to approve the approval not required? <laughs> so moved. Second. <clears throat> is there any further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, you're all Thank set. Thank you very much. You got it. Do, do we have to sign? Do you want to take it? just well this time. Got to sign. We'll be set. <coughs> just put it out there while coming. How many did you need? Two. Yeah. All right, I need somebody else. Carol's closer. Or, or Gary's right there. Sure. First, nobody wants to sit next to me. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. 20 and I a few minutes uh, that we have until our 745 um, just to let the public know if they're here for a particular hearing there's been a couple uh, requests for continuances so you don't sit here all night if you don't have to <clears throat> one is um, the 830 public hearing for Maskinock Woods they have requested to continue to January 14th <clears throat> and Whisper away. When did they request? This? They requested to continue to our next meeting, December seventeenth. So Whisper Way has uh, requested to continue to yeah. December seventeenth. Seventeenth. 17. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so if you're here for either of those hearings, it doesn't make any sense to. You. 
Um, we have a few minutes. Does uh, Mayor, do you want to update us on Zach, or does anybody want to update us on it? Um, yes, um, I actually was just trying to get my thoughts together. Well, on, do you, on you can wait because I'm surprising you, but you're <laughs> um, we did have a very successful public hearing um, on last Monday, and um, there were several items on our list that were not strictly zoning bylaw related. And I wanted to, and but they, but they certainly could be of benefit to the planning board. And, you know, thinking of <coughs> Zach as being a subcommittee to the planning board, I just wanted planning board approval to keep them on our list. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, I only have my handwritten notes, Georgia. Uh, I'm pulling um, up some notes. Right okay. There. Yeah. there were three items, and um, do you remember which ones they were? Do you have them? Um, we had talked about. Phoenix stone walls. Um, someone had also wanted a definition of sidewalks. That was something else we were going to talk about with planning board. Um, Actually, those aren't the ones I was thinking of. Oh, so you're referring to the things that were general bylaw issues. I was no. I was I was uh, referring to the things that were not bylaw related. They were uh, and they were on the original list. They weren't proposed that day. Let me think. I don't want to take up the time. Let's let's do it offline um, and bring it up at the next meeting. Um, when is the next meeting? Our next meeting is next Monday. Um, but we but those we have so many things to discuss that we can continue to discuss things and we can hold off on those items that I specifically wanted clarification on until such time as we can get that clarification. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a, a small thing we can talk about. Perfect. Uh, Amy, if, if you want to also talk about it, uh, Troop One is doing their Christmas tree sales <laughs> behind CVS, in the former fucking lot of Colalas. Mm -hmm. And uh, Troop Four is doing recycling, so if you like to have your tree recycled after the holidays, <coughs> um, the information is online and on the Pump News. Well, public service announcement there. I like it for the scouts. Um, we're just waiting a couple of minutes until it's actually 7.45. <clears throat> How about the minutes? minutes? Yeah. Can I entertain a motion on the minutes? From, is it 10, what is it? For 11. 11. Oh, no, 10.29. I move it is to 10 approve the minutes as written. Second. Uh, any discussion? I just had a minor fact that I already told you. Okay. All those in favor? Oh. Nope. What? I jumped in too fast okay. when you're done. All right, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed, any abstentions? Okay, yeah, Georgia. Um, I have our dates for 2019, so I'll have those emailed to the board tomorrow and then I'll print out copies for everyone. Um, but just so you guys know, the first two meetings in 2019 are January 14th and January 28th. Um, and our last meeting, next meeting, is the last one of December. Okay. We can do a little website update. Perfect. Okay. So um, I sent the corrections to the Acela page listing our um, our liaison roles, and that's mm -hmm. been all updated. And also uh, Elaine backfilled the planning board decisions. Um, remember, there was a big gap. Oh, from, awesome. Yeah. So it looks like they it looks like they're all in there from <coughs> filled in the whole gap. Perfect. Um, and Georgia, will you keep up with that, putting the decisions in that the, yep. on the web page? That's amazing. Thank you, Amy. That's per that's awesome. Yeah. I have an update. Okay. Madam Chair, um, regarding the Open Space Preservation Committee, yep. which I'm in the day now. Uh, at our last meeting, we discussed supporting HALT, right, the Huffington Area Land Trust's goal to purchase 80 acres of land uh, behind Granite Street. So here we go down Granite. And now we get Deer Run and South Farm. There's an area behind those houses there, about 80 acres. Nice. Uh, so for that CPC request uh, by halt, we'll go in for uh, town uh, and town meeting. And town meeting. <coughs> we, as part of the Open Space Preservation Committee, uh, fully support that. Okay. Can, can I ask, did um, CPC support that? Or <coughs> they did? Yes. Oh, they did. Great. I don't, has that gone to, I don't think that's gone to CPC yet. In fact, it. I thought they had. Mm -hmm. 
check that. Um, maybe it hasn't. Maybe they're just looking for our support when they go when Hulk goes in front of CPC. Just know they have the issues for once again. Maybe I've got a head on CPC. Hopefully they will. I can give a quick CPC update because awesome. um, we are uh, through a good chunk of the um, decisions that have been proposed thus far. Um, just doing a quick look at the list. Uh, of course, I think the ones that probably have the biggest impact to the planning board that we don't have decisions on yet. There's a couple of things that we're just doing a little bit more research on. One is on uh, proposal for conservation restrictions on 12 parcels of land. There's a little bit of <coughs> clarity as to whether or not we needed to actually um, put a conservation restriction on these parcels just based on how they were um, acquired by the town. Um, there was a lot of discussion about the dog park um, and, and at the end of the day we haven't voted on it yet. I think they actually are with, withdrew it because of the proposed locations were not satisfactory to the CPC. Um, the CPC supported it last time, didn't they? They did. Okay. Um, and I think they're just, given the sensitivities around the dog park and the location of it, I think they're, they'd like to find a, a location that, that maybe is um, not as impactful to abutters. Um, so I think they're just trying to avoid a lot of the, the challenges that they faced at, at, um, at town meeting last year. Mm -hmm. um, they did recommend uh, funding for uh, irrigation at Pine Field, uh, $25,000 there. Um, EMC playground updates were, um, that was another contentious debate, um, but um, they did vote to um, support that as well. Um, and there's a couple of other things we haven't gotten to yet, specifically um, purchasing property at 180 and 182 Hayden Row, and then a uh, property purchase for a portion of the Upper Charles Trails Committee. But um, I think our next meeting is, uh, I'd have to check, but I think it's in two weeks from, two weeks from tomorrow. Okay. Can I ask, well, can I ask what the contention was at the EMC? I'm sorry. Um, you know, I, I think that, that a, a good chunk of the cost, uh, really, really two things, I think some people on the, the CPC felt that the, um, equipment was still in reasonably good condition and that there should be some way to, to utilize the existing equipment. Uh, and then secondly, there's some debate about what was an appropriate material to put down. Um, it's right now it's wood chips and the proposal is for a, a more cushioned um, like foam product that's, that's safer. Um, so I think in general, um, just some, some questions as to how important it was to update it. But uh, at the end of the day, I think the CPC voted uh, seven to one in support of it. Okay. Don't quote me on that though. You had a question? Oh, can I ask about the, uh, the cloth and fountain on the common needing a water filtration system? Has that come up yet? Uh, it has. Um, yeah. And, um, uh, is that? Um, sorry, I'm having a hard time reading here. We've so, yeah, so um, there it is. So, so they actually pulled that back. Um, there was, again, a lot of debate as to whether filtration is really the issue. Um, and, you know, currently they, they, they treat the water and, and there's just some debate about what the proper course of action there was. But I think um, some people brought some expertise to it about um, water systems and filtration and, and felt pretty strongly that um, it didn't require it. So they were going to, the, the applicants had pulled it and we're going to reevaluate. I just remain concerned that it continues to rust and we paid a lot of money to restore it and I don't want it to see it continue to rust further. But yeah, there's some debates about painting, whether we're better off painting it. Right. Boston paints their fountains, I think, at least twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, okay. yeah, there was a good, healthy dialogue <laughs> and debate, some strong opinions. Well, awesome job, you guys, filling the time and giving us great updates. Um, I will entertain a motion to uh, open the continued public hearing for Buckland Street and Leonard Street, the stormwater management permit. This is a request to withdraw the first application without prejudice. <coughs> and I'll uh, open the public hearing on um, the, well, I'll wait. Let's vote on that first. Um, does anybody have any uh, comments on uh, the request to withdraw the application without prejudice? Any concerns? 
Well, could you just explain to the public what, what it means? So uh, <clears throat> what we're going to do is actually the applicant has uh, requested to withdraw the, the existing application because there's so few members on the board that are available to vote on it. <clears throat> so they are going to withdraw the first one and <coughs> have submitted another one identical to it so that the full board will be able to vote on on uh, on the, the, the permit request. Through the chair, just to be clear, there are enough voting members available, but they feel they'd be better off with the full board. Yeah, I think that we need five, and we have five. Um, it's a pretty common practice. Yes, there are enough voting members, but it's a pretty common practice to um, invite the appli applicant to consider that as a strategy when they need um, a certain, you know, everybody needs a certain number of, of votes, and it's um, often in everybody's <coughs> best interest to have all the voting members. <clears throat> so if anybody would like to make a motion to uh, approve the request to withdraw the application without prejudice. I'll make a motion. Second. Is, <coughs> is there any further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I'm abstaining. Okay. <clears throat> so um, we, I, I will then entertain a motion to open the public hearing for Buckland Street and Leonard Street stormwater management permit <clears throat> and the continued public hearing for Buckland Street and Leonard Street, the petition to construct a paper street, Wall Street, and it's Wall Street development that's putting these forward. Moved. Is there a second? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? <clears throat> I'd like to invite the applicant forward. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, Lou Petrosi on behalf of Wall Street Development Corp. And I appreciate the uh, um, ability to withdraw that stormwater application that was previously submitted. Uh, since we last met, um, we had a site walk on two or three weeks ago. Um, in the snow. In the snow. <laughs> now gone. We were replaced by lots of water. Um, and we've also had an opportunity to meet with the town, um, Pig Beta to review their comments. And we are currently in the process of mod uh, making revisions primarily to the stormwater management report that um, they had requested a certain storm event type of uh, category that was a little bit uh, more stringent that was previously calculated. So we're essentially in the process of modifying those reports and uh, making a few revisions to the plans that were suggested by Beta and we hope to have those plans in the next couple of days. Uh, so we were anticipating a con to continue the, tonight's meeting on both of those um, till the next meeting, December 17th. Okay, did you want to give any updates at all or you, do you have updates? Um, the comments that were uh, the, in the review went, you know, we, we have no problems with making any of the revisions. It's just that because between the holiday and Thanksgiving and uh, vacation um, and the complexity of the drainage report that needs to be uh, revised, uh -huh. it's just a little bit more time consuming than anticipated. Um, so, but we anticipate that to be available by the end of the week uh, in, in, in time for review by you, f you require, beta requires a week in advance of the- The week. Tuesday before is the submission yeah, deadline. So they don't prefer before that. Oh yeah, no, well, we hope to have that, like I said, by the end of the week and um, get into beta so they can review it in time for our next next meeting on the 17th. Okay. Sorry. Uh, any questions from the board? Muriel, can I just make a note? Um, the public hearing outline that is in hard copy in front of you is the most recent, the one in the packet. Um, I updated it to include both votes at the bottom, so. The one in front of you is the most recent, and the one that the public has as well. Thank you. Um, this is um, 
the point on the hearing outline that we would invite um, the planning board members and the public to add to the existing outline. Does anybody have any additions they want to make to the outline on the board? I have one. Mm -hmm. Chair, uh, stormwater management uh, it talks about the impact on butter on Pleasant Street. Um, but I would also look at any impact to, I think it was a Maple Street extension, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. just on the sidewalk, it yep. became pretty evident to me. And, and I don't know, in the other comment, I'll just kind of say it and people can kind of chime in, but the wall, when we did the sidewalk, a lot of that water was wet now. And a lot of land was wet. All the water, water was, all the water, all water was, was wet. Thank you very much for your stating. Um, I know that the area to the south, there's some wetland areas in there, but the area that we walked is good, right? To be able to build up. Is there any perk tests that are done on that soil? And maybe this is something to add, or if I'm out of line here, I'm going to kind of pull that back. But, you know, it just became obvious to me it wasn't just the snow, but that area seemed pretty wet. I just want to make sure that from a building perspective, that is not. Well, it's not, uh, we wouldn't perform a perk test on that property, but we did do soil testing to determine to determine where the high groundwater would be, which in turn um, controls the, de the design of where the storm, how the stormwater management basement is constructed. Because in most cases, uh, the, the bottom of the basin has to be two feet above the highest groundwater, and that's um, what we're in the process of designing to comply with the so those maybe regulations. Maybe that kind of falls under the stormwater management portion here under 5C, and we'll just talk about that. It also talks about the Maple Street extension. Uh, I have another one, yep. Madam Chair, public safety. Uh, I, think, I think I saw something on this, but fire department access, how the board's going to uh, up there. Um, just make sure that's covered. I know that the chief's here, although I'm hoping specific issue with it, but I just want to make sure we covered on that one. And that was the only two that I had. Okay. Um, and <coughs> part of the part of the issue here will also be the long dead end, is that right? Okay. Yeah, I was just gonna suggest you put that under road layout. Road design. The, uh, yes, okay. <coughs> also under road design, I don't know. I don't think there's sidewalks that are proposed. No, we've asked for a waiver. Uh, we've, we've submitted a list of waivers from the uh, regulations that are the application, yes. Okay. Yeah, Frank. For the waiver request, um, there is some crossover with some of the other uh, items for sure. Um, so I'm wondering how, um, if you get legal feedback like we had gotten, um, this week about the, the whole situation, but maybe specifically for some of the waiver items. Um, I'm not sure the mechanism of how we do that. You know what, I, well, so two things on that. Um, I'm very willing um, to entertain the conversation on particular waivers if we need legal advice. But even just adding it t typically to our agendas, if there are waivers to like have a specific conversation mm -hmm. about the waivers that are requested for a particular development so it doesn't Necess I know the conversation happens on an ongoing basis, but it's necessarily called out for the public at a particular time we go through all the waivers. <clears throat> Is it rather than put the waivers with the topic? Cause no, I mean, I think that we'll have the conversation as we go, but to just make sure that we, uh, as we entertain a vote, that we go through the waivers and we all know <clears throat> what we have um, included as part of the decision. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. <clears throat> That's, that's great because I was going through the, all these all the different waivers from the different projects that we're going through and just trying to track them. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I think it's ideal. Okay. Um, anybody else have any? Anybody from the public have any additions? So I have to have you come up and and speak into this microphone, or the folks at home will miss. Okay. Um, <laughs> Hi, Mr. Terry. Hello, everyone. Again, thank you for serving on the board. Happy Hanukkah to anybody that pertains to and us all. Um, do I understand you're gonna start from scratch so that you can uh, include all the members as voting members instead of just the five that were restricted? 
That's true. So why don't we just start from scratch and uh, you know, are, there, are there any preliminary changes? It, it is essentially exactly that, Mr. Terry. We start from scratch it's, and the plan is exactly what was presented before at this point. Um, we're just reinitiating the process from the beginning so that all members that are now on the planning board can participate. So the, st the stormwater drain basin has not been changed as a site on the location? Has, ha have there been any changes? It hasn't been changed yet, but as a result of David's comments, there will be certain revisions made to it. Yeah, we don't have new plans yet. Yeah, it sounds like we should probably wait and get the, get the new proposal and then uh, go at it. Yeah, we are definitely going to need to wait for Beta's comments and their re or their response to Beta's comments and back and forth right. before we get going. Uh, yeah. Because it was my understanding that, see, our land is in the, uh, as you go down Leonard Street, it would be on the uh, southeast corner where the, uh, where the drains come in from the water that comes down from Leonard Street and the water that comes across from Box Hill Road and they all drain right into that corner. Mm -hmm. And then they were gonna go down into a, a drainage basin that was uh, along parallel to Leonard Street as it continued on down. Mm -hmm. And uh, now I understand this to be a, a large berm put up so that this water is gonna be Actually, it's going to be like an avenue driven right down to my land, which is down on the on the on the uh, west side. And this this berm basin is going to be up here, protecting these houses that are over here. This is the plot right here, and these houses that are over here. And there's going to be a big berm here. So all this water, plus the water that's coming in off of them. Now I'm going to get it all. Before I was only get going to get what seeped out of the basin. Now that the basin's over here. It yep. seems like, but again, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Yes, but um, the regulations do mandate that the developer maintain, you know, keep his water on his own site. He can't just channel it down to the property that's below, which happens to be yours. That's great, thank you. Yep. If, if I can add um, to your comments, <coughs> it's very interesting looking at the history of the properties and, and, and your, your dad's name and, uh, Facts going back to 1937 and even further, it's, uh, it's quite the history lesson. Uh, any other members of the public with, yep, yeah, come on up. Hi, thanks. Ted Barker, Hooks, 75 Grove Street. Okay. Um, I imagine it's probably part of uh, each public safety anyway, but I would love to make sure we have a discussion about traffic patterns in that area. I live right around the corner. Uh, it's a lot of corners that aren't 90 degree angles. We have accidents of plenty on Grove and Pleasant with Leonard coming out and Box Mill coming out and now this one at a funky angle. I want to just make sure that we talk about the potential for more traffic coming in at funny angles with additional roads crammed into a very small area. Fair enough. Thank you. Anybody else from the public? Okay. Uh, did you want to um, give us an update on the um, petition to construct the paper street? Uh, other than the same comments that we have, we reviewed it with Beta. We have revisions to the plan based on what Beta has uh, suggested. And those will be incorporated into the next submittal, okay. which will be submitted with the drainage. And so everything is wrapped up into one package okay. for both uh, hearings. All right, and you're confident we'll be ready for the 17th? Yes. All right, do we, do we have uh, what time would be best? Um, so uh, we have the LNG um, applications at 745, and then a potential bond release um, for D Davenport Village, Hayden Woods at 815. And that's it. Um, the bond release, that's typically pretty brief, isn't it? I would leave about 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, you had a question or comment? Yes. Um, this might be a stupid question, but um, does comment. Beta, as part of their review, do they do a site walk? Yeah. Yep. They do. I don't know if they always do or do they always do. I don't know. Well, I just know for this they one. They did in this yeah. case. 
They did? Yeah. Okay. Um, and they usually do before, just so when they do their scope of services, I think they want to get a sense of the project before they um, give their fee. Anybody else before we take the necessary? Yes. One question. Uh, Mr. President, you're meeting with CONCOM tomorrow? Uh, no, we're, uh, we've, su we've submitted um, uh, notice of intent for the individual lots, and we've continued the stormwater management part of that to December 18th is when our meeting is. So they'll be building the area all simultaneously on the lots in the road at one time. Yeah. I, I will also say that I believe the um, town council has um, submitted a legal opinion based on comments from Attorney Bob Barry from the last meeting. Mm -hmm. that was the yep, and we we all received that. So yeah. Okay. I don't know if we have anything else to talk about till we get the response for. Yeah, we really need to. As Mr. Terry said, we need to look at the plans, the revisions that have been made, and have beta review them once again, and then have a discussion about the right. rest of the right. plan. Um, <clears throat> it would behoove you, I think, to speak with um, the fire chief in between now and then, yes. to make sure um, you get his feedback both on how you're going to get in, get in and out, for the, and also the length of the proposed development. Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion to continue this public hearing to 8.30 on December 17th. And we have to extend the decision deadline oh, should we for do the that petition? First? Yes. Thank um, you. Let me look at my calendar. <coughs> so right now the decision deadline is um, December 7th. So if we're continuing to... The 17th. Let's just make it for Christmas Day. That'll work out. <laughs> We would have to. I think <laughs> it makes sense to push <laughs> it into January. We can just do January 7th. Is that okay? Yeah, January 7th. Sure. Is that okay? <clears throat> okay. So I'll entertain a motion. question. Maybe yep. silly. Um, oh, good. Another silly question. No, that's good. But on, on the map up there, um, oh. it's I don't know if it's online right now. The um, street light is, of course, concerned. Um, but will it be connecting to the Maple Street extension? Um, which is still it's, on the, it's on the consideration, but there's been no. Um, we've got some some dialogue we got, but we haven't really come to any conclusions. In this and, and we'll talk to the fire chief and all the public safety um, officials and see how they feel about that. <coughs> Thank you. Could we discuss at all the process of because we the, uh, the town we can discuss anything. So okay. go ahead. The town attorney said we can't determine ownership, but that makes this whole thing. Very yeah. confusing. Yeah, it does. So, I welcome the discussion. Leave us <laughs> off, Amy. I've been, I've been, I've been avoiding it. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, I don't even know where to begin. Right? Like, so, <laughs> we could make a decision, and then it could turn out that um, it's determined that they don't own, or the well, di different party yeah. owns it. Uh, so, some of the some of the thoughts that I have put into process, and I am very open to anybody's suggestion on that, um, is to um, at least get the history of decisions um, from the past. So we know what planning boards before us have decided and how they've decided them on this particular piece. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and then I guess we have to, um, we have to decide where, we don't get to decide the legal question, fortunately. Of property rights. Of property rights, right. Mm -hmm. um, but we do get to decide. Um, it, it feels to me, everything that I've read and thought about it, is that we need to um, contemplate subdivision bylaws completely in there. And it doesn't, it doesn't feel to me, and I'm just throwing that out there, that this is just a simple A&R decision. Um, but those are my initial thoughts, and anybody else can Wade right in. I think it's important to just make the statement that the opinion that we got from Miaris specifically says that it needs to be the dispute over the property and access of the property has to be resolved between the people that want to develop using that road and the people that 
have a different view on it. And that's not something that we're going to decide. So, you know, this, the, le the letter that we received is public documentation, and you're welcome to, to get a copy of it so that you can see exactly what the lawyers told us about the property. We're just going to look at it from a development standpoint and assume that, that it's developable. So if, if you're opposed to that, then you need to address it in court on your own, right? The legal channel. That's the way that I'm reading it. <clears throat> to that point, we, just at this meeting, we received a letter today that there is legal action in, in place. So it's a matter of process. I think from our, my perspective, when this board is, is seeing how the process works out, uh, seeing the information we get from the developer, from our, from our um, scientists on our side, uh, neighborhood feedback, and then our town bylaws and state laws. And um, I think at the end of the day, we just need to follow what's best for the town. And it's a combination of all the laws and process that we're, we'll be experiencing and hearing about. <coughs> Was there something new today, or these are the she sent this? From, uh, this yeah, yeah, I did. I think I did read that. Okay. So, Amy, you teed us up. What What are your oh, thoughts? No, I just <laughs> oh, seriously. Uh, <laughs> no, it just I think it's a very confusing uh, right. process. Uh, it is a conf it is definitely a confusing process, and we need to be really careful to um, you know to use the colloquialism, stay in our lane, and make sure that we speak to the development parts of it um, and not the legal decision. Um, I don't know if a uh, town planner has any thoughts to add to it. Well, I was going to say, too, if any members have specific legal questions that they kind of want to craft, uh, they can't really phrase them right now because it is so confusing. Um, council's happy to answer those and ask that I ask the board if they do. Um, and again, I would refer to the letter. It's, I've read it about four times, so right. piecing it apart, it's the same right. exact thing. Um, I, I guess I have a big question on sequencing. Like, do we wait for um, the legal determination or? I would say you deal with the decision? information you have at hand. I mean. I'm assuming that this letter means it's going to be a long time. Yeah. But I don't know that that process necessarily drives our process. No, no. I, I think they're Anybody? somewhat mutually exclusive. Um, I, I do think, to the chair, uh, your question in terms of staying within our lane and just focusing on um, either, or do we want to kind of do the, the, the paper road uh, elements first or combine it with the stormwater management? So it's all one, right? So you can kind of look at them if you wanted to kind of like kind of decouple them and be able to address each one on its own and then bring it all back together or do it all together at one shot. So we do have the two public hearings. I think that the way that they've been designed, it, we're, they're just they're they are independent public hearings, but they're going to be concurrent. We're doing them at the same time. I know. So, so we're just it's kind of like the Wilson Street process. So we had the special permit and the stormwater, and the special permit had so much, you know, meat to it. Um, right. And if the board liked the way that process went, stormwater management's along for the ride. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Hello. Um, just a high level question. So I, I look at that map and I see that, you know, those poor unfortunate people with the two homes in front with this road about to go right between, right on their doorstep, seems unfortunate. And that the real access should be on Leonard Street. Now, I know there were some reasons that that cannot happen, but I'm a little dense. Can somebody just summarize those for me? It's too wet. Yeah. It's on Leonard lines. Street? Yeah. That, and I believe when Leonard is in the back, private. okay. Is Leonard privately owned too? Yes. Um, we have, as you can see from the parcel, we have frontage on both uh, Barclay Street and Leonard Street. Okay. Um, because there is some there are isolated wetlands that have been pre predetermined by or established by the Conservation Commission. In order to cross those wetlands uh, or to get to the upland portion of those lots, we'd have to cross the wetland driveways or common driveways to access the 
up a portion of the province. Historically, commissions would like you to pursue the least uh, impactful access without impacting the uh, resource area. So in this particular case, Buckland Street doesn't require any filling of any or alteration of any wetlands and therefore that would be the most preferred route to um, access the lots. Now we did, uh, as part of our submittal to the Conservation Commission, we did present a couple of alternative analysis of uh, showing access from Leonard Street onto the upland portion of the lots, which would, under those scenarios, we could potentially abandon the right of way of Buckland Street and have that land area be encompassed in the lot areas and would allow some uh, different type of house placement. Uh, and it would also you know, probably reduce the stormwater management requirements that we would have to uh, comply with. So it's uh, something that we don't drive that process. We, we have the, reg the regulations of both the planning board and the conservation commission. And we have to try and apply those to this property as best we can um, with the hopeful outcome that of an approval of some sort of that direction. Thank you. That's a very good explanation. Just a follow-up question mm -hmm. to the chair. So did the ComCom say there was basically no way to come in from that? Or is there in the follow-up question, those circles, rough circles, is that is that the wet area wetland area roughly? That's correct. The first answer to your first question is the commission has not weighed in yet because we have had a public hearing okay. on a specific issue. Um, uh, the areas that are sort of like in the circles or the regular circles, those are the delineated boundary of the isolated wetland that has been um, established by the commission. Sorry, one final comment. Of course. Was there um, any possible discussion of maybe a driveway in the middle, a common driveway that feeds three houses or something like that? Well, under your, we did look at that under your current uh, zoning bylaws, the common driveway, the maximum number of lots that you can serve was two, lot, two lots. And I think, if I read it correctly, that the driveway has to have, uh, have to, has to access from the front of one of those two lots. So three lots would not be allowed under your, under your zoning bylaws. Um, we did show the uh, commission a proposal to have two common driveways serving two lots each um, that might possibly be acceptable to the commission, but we haven't had the opportunity yet to have a dialogue with them on that possibility. Thank you. And that <coughs> happens for you after our next meeting? That's correct. I have a request to the applicant before you submit next time. I know your your yeah. plans say um, one inch equals 30 feet. Yes. Can you put an inch on your drawing so that I can <laughs> see what that oh, is? Because yeah. I, I okay. know it's I know it's not that yes. when I see it in the size I see it. Right. I agree. And I think the plan also shows the wrong number on one of the houses. Is that right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, 62 should be... No, 58, 58 and 60. 60. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't be a terrible idea to correct that. Yeah, no, <clears throat> Doesn't it have two numbers somehow? That's 58, yeah. 60, 62? It should be sequentially, but at some point, some time in the past when the plans were done, was, the town had it as 58. Yeah, that's right. Um, to the chair, yeah. I have a comment to, to David's question. Um, one, the reason they can't build off uh, that frontage of Leonard Street is that state law uh, protects the wetlands, this buffer zone of at least 50 feet. Our local law bylaws is 100 feet, so there, there's no way that they could build the lots as they're envisioned here from Leonard Street. Uh, and that's, that's the reason I believe that they're going through bottle Well, not quite true, actually. Um, these wetlands are not restricted by the state at all, period. These are, these are wetlands, isolated wetlands, which are not regulated under the State Wetlands Protection Act. They're only regulated under the town bylaw. The town bylaw has certain buffer zone requirements, 50 feet and 100 feet, that um, as developers, we have to submit information to overcome 
certain uh, evidence to, to substantiate the fact that we won't adversely impact those particular resource areas. So these wetlands are not um, regulated by the state, simply under the local law. I have what might be a foolish question. Which is stricter than the state law anyway, so. Excuse me? Mm -hmm. Right. The, the local bylaw is stricter than the state bylaw, right? Uh, I'm not going to make an opinion. It is, factually. It's a 100 feet buffer zone for, for our state bylaw, yeah. local bylaw. You know, I, I did just think of one other thing. Um, in our outline, did we talk about historic preservation, like preservation of the stone walls? No. I think we should add that somewhere. Um, so I just want to circle back on the double driveway question. Did you say, and I apologize if I missed it in your explanation, I was sort of focused on entering from Pleasant Street on Buckland. Mm -hmm. Did you address potentially coming in with driveways to um, double driveways from Leonard? We did submit a plan that shows um, two common driveways coming in off of Leonard Street, and one other alternative that was a combination of uh, uh, common drive, one common driveway and two individual driveways. So mm -hmm. there is, it, it is possible to do that, but um, again, when you measure impacts, buffer zone impacts and wetland impacts, um, those coming in off of Leonard Street creates more disturbance and more impacts than coming in off of Buckland Street. So truly the wetlands are really driving how you access this property and develop it. Well, if, if, the, if the wetlands, let's say, weren't there, we would have the ability to possibly develop nine lots on this property. So mm -hmm. the wetlands are sort of limiting the potential development sure. of the property. For sure. Yeah. But um, having frontage on two, let's call it two paper streets, you know, gives us the opportunity to evaluate access from one or the other. But in this particular case, the isolated wetlands sort of puts a little bit of a, another hurdle to get over because another board has to make that decision, not, not the planning board. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say out loud, it, it, this seems like a very heavy lift for four lots. Like, I, I just... We, we only do what the zoning permits us to do. The zoning yeah, no, I'm not arguing that at all. It's just there's so many challenges here. I just... Um... That's what I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, anybody else have any? Yeah, Deb. I just have some concerns with, that Amy, Amy started to allude to um, about deciding on something that may never actually, because it's not legally determined yet. And is there precedence by the planning board as to how that's been done um, in the past? Um, has it always been, you know, what's driven what? Has the stormwater? management plan been driven or have they waited for a legal determination um, and if we were to make a decision and Leonard Street seemed more um, legally compatible um, would we're, we we're, better visit we're not going to decide the legality no we're not but I'm saying that in would any he way want to submit something that potentially would be Viable in either case. That's kind of totally. Get the last part of <laughs> Would you prefer to submit something that's viable in either case, whether it's determined or not? Well, I think if, if we were to get a favorable uh, conversation going with the Conservation Commission relative to the access from trust me, coming in off of Lemon Street is less of an obstacle for us as a developer because we're not building a 700 foot roadway with all kinds of improvements. So for us, it would be more of a, not as heavy a lift as Chin would mm -hmm. say. So if, 
But again, we're not driving that conversation, and I don't know what influence the planning board has with the conservation commission. But zero. So just that, <laughs> that dialogue has to. We have to guess. Uh, convince the conservation commission that that would be the most beneficial way to approach the development of this property. So I, I'm just going to say out loud, just from a process perspective, um, the boards are independent. Yes, on purpose, and we're you know we're sure. not going to get in the business of trying to you know finesse through another board yeah. um, for sure. But I you know we'd definitely be candid about the issues as we see them. Yeah, and with regard to the legal aspects, of, uh, you know, if somebody has a challenge of whether or not you approve the plan, and somebody appeals, or you disapprove the plan and we appeal, or. Those, those are all We're going independent. to court no matter what. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> those are all independent processes. You know, right. If somebody has a, uh, a land dispute with someone, they have to proceed through the... We do have a legal proceeding underway at the present time, so um, we're feeling pretty confident about our situation, so or else we wouldn't be spending all this money. Okay. Do, do you have any idea when the legal, the civil action is going to proceed? Uh, well, it's proceeding now. So Do you so have any court dates or estimated time uh, of completion? Or? Um, I don't really have any dates. I'm not privy to that at this point, but I know there's a process on the way. Okay, fair enough. All righty. One other question. Sure. The applicant to the chair. Do you, has the uh, Conservation Commission done a site walk? Well, I don't think they've done so We had a proceeding with the Conservation Commission about a year and a half ago where we filed for what is called a request for determination to establish the boundaries of the resource areas on the properties. Um, at that time, um, the commission either walked the site or their consultants walked the site with our consultant and they agreed on that line that is on the plan. They agreed that that was the boundary of the, of the resource area. Whether or not they've been out there since, I, I have no idea. We haven't done that. Mr. Chair, if I can answer Deb's question historically, um, if you have time. Yep. Um, my very first meeting on the planning board as a candidate was 2010. That meeting was about Dunkin' Donuts, and it's 2018 and they finally opened. So legal things can slow down process. Um, oh, wow. There's the context, right? <laughs> yeah. Time flies by, you don't even know it. And, uh, but things work, things work out for the best to do all the committees and the whole process and the developers and the neighbors working together. Thank you. Working together. Steel sharpening steel, I think, in this case. <laughs> all right. Um, I will entertain a motion to continue this. Oh, wait, first. We, we did decide on... Did we vote on the decision? January 7th, I believe. January 7th. So I'll entertain a motion to extend the decision to January 7th, 2019. Can I ask a question before we continue? Or Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I um, just was struck on the site walk of just how very close Buckland Street would be to the two homes, uh -huh. 60 and 62. It doesn't look like they would meet the setback requirements oh. of this new road. Is that? But I don't see that on the list of waivers. Oh. Or yes, I'm listening. So um, that road had been in existence for since 1946 on paper. So, and in, in our, from the research that we've done, it existed on the ground as far back as 1936, which I'll be submitting evidence to that effect shortly. Those homes were uh, what would be considered. Are we talking about the Pleasant Street homes? Mm -hmm. Okay. The Thank one, you. the one property that is, uh, I believe it's um, 62 uh, Pleasant Street. That would be considered a pre-existing non-conforming building. But so that doesn't necessarily play into your decision. Your so right. Maybe it is a pre-existing building, but that doesn't affect what we're. No. what we're no. thinking about. The other home that was just recently built, um, they somehow got an endorsement uh, uh, from the planning board that allowed that lot or that house to be built where it's built. Mm -hmm. So whether or not that is um, somehow it got through this board. So. I think that's the problem with paper streets. <laughs> 
I think there's a lot of a lot of challenges. Challenges. So uh, you know, and I'm not a lawyer, so I don't really know the technicality between owning to the center line of the roadway versus to the property lines. So there's, oh, I, there's all I, kinds I, of aspects to it that we could get into. And yeah, this might be a question that's way ahead of the game, but are we sure the center line is what we think the center line is, or what? what's the deal with paper streets? Is Well, so, I don't want to get into a lot of uh, legal aspects of it, but in some cases, private ways, parties on either side of the street can own to the middle. In our case, Buckland Street has it in, in front of our property. We haven't owned the whole right of way. There's no ownership on the other side. So we own a full width of, of Buckland Street. On the Lennon Street side, we own to the middle of Lennon Street. And it all has to do with how the property's conveyed over the short of time. That and letter we've all been studying, yeah, yes. That's all, I mean, that's all I know about it at this point. All right. So I think that that's a fair question um, for sure that Amy asks is whether or not we need to consider um, the uh, waiving the setbacks on those the two existing homes. Yeah, that, that, that would have nothing to do with me. It, <clears throat> well, you want to put a road there. Yeah, I feel yeah. like it does. Uh, 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 Look, I, I feel like this planning board is going to be thinking about that. Yeah. So yeah, you yeah, better. So, but there's nothing really that you have to read the opinions of the attorneys going back to 1998 when the town council reviewed this for the planning board back then to today, and I think you'd find the opinion that your current town council shares is similar to the one from 1998, which is similar to our attorney, which is going to be similar to probably a judge, so. Well, we'll find out. Yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, the setbacks are not a problem along the Maple Street extension. I don't remember. You know, uh, all the houses, if you see the last house on Maple Street extension, that house is Similarly, similarly situated with uh, within the proximity of the right of way, it's barely five feet off the end of the right of way. So, you, uh, you know, houses that were built 100 years ago or whenever, that when there was no zoning requirements, right? You can't retroactively now try to enforce. Those so I'm zones. again, I'm not talking about addressing any of those houses that don't meet standards, but we are talking about putting a subdivision in that's going to have to meet standards? Well, again, the, the houses that we build and the road and the set will, will meet all of the setback requirements of the zoning bylaws. We're not going to be, we're not responsible for pre-existing buildings. So I guess, I, I guess I understand what you're saying is that the, the road is the road and that it is so close to those houses is I, I at least understand what you're saying. Okay. Madam Chairman, mm -hmm. Chairman, excuse me. Um, maybe that would be an appropriate follow-up for our town council because I think it would help us get yeah. some clarity yeah, as to whether or not the setback requirements even apply to this. Yeah, I think that would be I a agree. good perspective to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? If I could pile on a little bit, but maybe more in your favor, if working with the developer, working with the existing neighbors could find a solution as well. So it's it's not one or the other. It's a myriad of. of I think you're absolutely right. And if there was a, a, a here on the other side that we that was listening to us, then we probably could have some sort of dialogue. But apparently there isn't right now. So you're willing to pick up those two houses and move them over? No, uh, no just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, no, the, the no one, heads up, Dave. We, heads up. We, we, <laughs> we knock it down. We knock it down. Those new ones. So I mean, it's just just a question of. Yeah, historically we've done. Uh, trees and walls and different kind of solutions to help alleviate some of the, some of the concerns. We, we, uh, we did talk, we did talk about. Hold on one second. Just hold on. Um, I'm going to entertain a motion to open and continue the public hearing on the Maspinock Woods West Elm Street Garden Apartment site plan amendment to January 14th at what time? 745? 745. So moved. Second. 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 Discussion. Sure, discussion. Haven't they been moved back before? Is this like the seventh or eighth time? I do not know the history. I do know that it is rich and <laughs> tumultuous. 
Um, so I, I don't really know. And I know that CONCOM has some real concerns and they're going to see them first. Is that right? Yeah. So I think that's as it should be. No, that's... Uh, Open up. All those in that's favor, signify by oh. saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Page is All right, thank you. Okay, so you were going to say, I'm sorry. You, you have a little extra time. Oh. Oh. Shading trees. Oh, oh, those are all 26. options. Um, 27, uh, actually. Buffering or mitigation for existing homes we typically would oh. consider when there's some dialogue. Okay, you know what I noticed, and this is my mistake, I'm sorry. I'm going to have you come back. We actually have, uh, we, we did those two at 8.30, we have two hearings at 8.30. So. Well, we're continuing anyway. So yes, yes. So let's take those votes. Um, we have a motion and a second, I believe, to mm -hmm. uh, continue the decision to January 7th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? And I will entertain a motion to continue the public hearings, both of them, to uh, uh, December 17th at 8.30. Second. Oh, motion oh, first. Motion. <laughs> One, oh. two. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so we'll see you on the 17th. Thank you very much. You got it. I will entertain a motion to open the continued public hearing on 18 Cedar Street off street parking special yeah. permit application. So moved. So. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Applicant for this 18 Cedar Street. We're all set. Glasses required. Yeah, it does look like yeah, that's that's what we have on yeah, the chair. One more. I think we need one more for Gary on the end. Thank you. I do like being able to see him and touch him. Oh. <laughs> you know the best when it's the color wrong, too. It's wrong of me. I know. I'm supposed to. <laughs> no, not good for the environment. Uh, <laughs> Welcome. Please introduce yourself and your team plan. and your project. That wasn't a good What do you need? Oh, I'm going to actually have to have you, have you sit only because the public at home can't hear you if you're too far away from the microphone. Oh. Uh, but otherwise, we'd love to have you stand, but we have to have you near the microphone. I'm Janice Brown. Hey, Janice. I'm the owner and um, the developer. And I have a man who engineered the land, Al Gala. 
all the work, and this is my site supervisor, my son, my contractor, my carpenter person. This is a Tunner, who is helping me interpret the guidelines. And this is my partner here, Carl Oldenburg, who has been working with me for almost a year <laughs> to um, get to this point. Okay, so oh, we're very happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to clarify, I'm the architect of the project. And, uh, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's my partner only in that he's an independent architect. <laughs> gotcha. And I'm an independent person. <laughs> yes. so, uh, thanks very much and good evening. Um, uh, there's kind of a lot to go through sort of quickly, so I, I wrote up something and I'll sort of try to go through as quickly as I can. But okay. I wrote it to get it. Uh, is the microphone close to me? Uh, would this be better? Is it on? Then, so that's going to be hard for, for at home. So what's the? He's just. You're just going to have to talk louder. So these uh, mics not, don't project. Oh, they don't. Mics are really for the folks at home. Yeah. So okay. you need to speak up for the <clears throat> folks that are here. Oh, we're broadcasting. Yep. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Um, if people need to move forward, please feel free. Because it is hard to hear, I know. I can turn slightly sideways if that helps. Perfect. Maybe turn around occasionally to. <laughs> if I knew sign language, I'd do that, but I don't. Um, I, so I'll start with just providing a very brief description of the project and the site. Uh, I know that you've got all the materials and I've reviewed it, but I'll just sort of start from the beginning, uh, as well as kind of where we are in the approvals process and why we're here tonight. What Perfect. We're asking for. So uh, the subject property is at the corner of Cedar Street and A Street. It's a little under 12,000 square feet. My husband has a vacant house on it that's in a poor condition and a dilapidated shed. Uh, and the site is at the very edge of the BD zoning district. And although it's zoned for business, it abuts residential zoning. And most of the neighboring buildings are residential in use and in character. So at the beginning, Janice and I discussed the possibility of a, of a small commercial or mixed-use development on the property, which would be allowed by right in the BD zoning district. But Janice had a vision of this as a, uh, as a residential project, a multifamily residential structure that looks like a big house. And it would contain small apartments that would appeal to folks who are looking for relatively inexpensive housing a short walk from the, from the town's commercial district. She envisioned singles or couples, most likely without children, uh, perhaps retirees or young professionals living in the building. And this would uh, continue the residential use of the property and the building's appearance would be consistent with the residential character of the surroundings. So our proposal is for a single building, two stories high, that looks like a big house. And it'll have eight apartments each a little under 600 square feet, one bedroom and one bathroom each. Each floor of the building will have uh, four units, one in each corner. It's basically a square building with a center hallway and a main entrance in the front and a secondary entrance in the back. And the ground floor units will have small private outdoor spaces, yards or decks. Um, now in the, in the business district, residential use is allowed only with a special permit. <clears throat> a, number of a number of business uses would be allowed without a special permit, but in this, the residential use would need a special permit through the <coughs> Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay. And we've applied for a special permit from the Zoning Board of Appeals and had an initial hearing a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago, I don't remember. And there were some concerns expressed by the abutters mainly having to do with parking. So we took a pause to make some design changes and uh, redesigned the parking and uh, had that hearing continued until a little later this month, the 14th, I think it is. And the zoning bylaw. Everybody here is super glad it's not us. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it happens to us all. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it happens all the time. I have the same ringtone. So uh, the zoning bylaw also requires a special permit from the planning board for parking that is located between a building and a street other than Main Street. So two special permits? Uh, well, actually three altogether. So okay. one, one yep. is for um, the residential use 
in a business district to yep. the Zoning Board of Appeals. The second is with this board, the planning board for yep. parking located between the building and the street. And third, we are applying for a special permit through the ZBA for uh, a, a non-conforming lot in terms of size. <coughs> it's a little too small. Okay. And um, so we have a hearing before them on the, uh, I think it's the 13th? 12th. 12th. I'm sorry, 12th, 12th of December. Um, have you initiated with them or? Yes. Yes. Yeah, okay. And we had our first hearing with them for the, the first special permit, which is the, the residential use in the business district. Uh, and it had submitted a slightly different version of the plans than you see here now. Well, the building design is the same, but the parking layout was different. Okay. And um, there were some concerns by abutters, uh, primarily about parking and the number of parking spaces we were being, that we were providing. Okay. Um, in fact, that's just what I was just gonna say in my next paragraph here. So when we made the um, application to the planning board for the special permit regarding parking, we submitted that same site plan, the same initial site plan, mm -hmm. which is for eight parking spaces. Yeah. Um, and then uh, after that first hearing, we they say, took a pause and kind of redesigned things so that there are, is a greater number of parking spaces. And that's what's on the, on the screen now. And I presume you have the latest plans, but there might have, you might have seen the earlier version with eight spaces, and if so, Ignore that <laughs> and, and look at the newer one. Um, we, uh, so the new plan increases the parking spaces from eight to a total of 13, which includes four tandem spaces. And the tandem spaces could be used by tenants who have more than one car or for overflow parking. Uh, we also made provision for a dumpster uh, if required. And if we don't require the dumpster, then there's an additional parking space or maybe parking spaces if one is a tandem, uh, as well as temporary snow storage and a, and a better provision for deliveries and so forth. So as a result of the, or because of that design change, we asked for a postponement of a hearing before you so that we could prepare the new drawings and get them to you. And so I think you have all the latest materials. And we provided copies of um, site plan and the renderings to members of the audience as well. And Thank you for that. Plan. That's very nice. So hopefully everyone can see the proposal and, 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 uh, and be able to uh, ask questions. So tonight's hearing is really just with regard to the parking between the building and the streets, um, just that special permit. Now, because this is a residential project, the zoning bylaw requires that the building conform to the dimensional requirements of a residential zone, the RA zone, even though the property is in the BD zone. So the front yard setback is therefore 40 feet and the side yards are 10 feet. It's a corner lot, so there are two fronts and two rear yard, or two side yards and no rear yard. So this results in the buildable area really being pushed to the far um, northeast corner of the site mm -hmm. uh, with no room for any parking except between the building and the streets. There's just no other space. And in our first go around, we tried to concentrate the parking on the south side of the building facing A Street, and we were able to squeeze in eight spaces uh, in order to create a sort of a big front lawn in front of the building, which we thought would look great as you drove past it on Cedar Street. But after, we, after our first hearing, we realized that it would be much better to provide, well, obviously the abutters were insisting on uh, a greater number of parking spaces and a, uh, a better thought out access to the dumpster if one is required and, and snow storage and so forth. Okay, and you've said if one is required two times. Is there some requirement for dumpsters that I need to understand? Not that I know of off the top of my head. I don't know what we Okay. Do you know if there's well, some decision uh, that happened? Good question. I couldn't find that there's specifically a requirement, but I wanted to design it as if it were required. Okay. And, and the issue is that it's, uh, there isn't town pickup of trash, I guess, so that it would be under, uh, up to the owner to, mm -hmm. to figure that out. And she has an alternative mm -hmm. plan in mind, mm -hmm. uh, which would not require a dumpster. Uh, yeah. But I just wanted to make sure we were right. ready if we needed to. It's my yeah. plan not to have a dumpster. Okay. I don't like the idea of having it there in the yard. Can, can I just ask what your plan would be if you don't have a dumpster? I have a trash room in the basement. Oh, it will be a trash room in the basement, and um, and then it will be brought up on the appropriate day to be picked up by a private. By a private, I've talked to one private firm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'll have to have somebody take it to the curb. 
And then a key point of our redesign was to have uh, the, the, the main entry to the parking off of Cedar Street instead of A Street, where it was originally. Um, we do have a few spaces located off of A Street, um, four spaces. This, this amounts essentially to a, a driveway like, like you'd see in front of a house, about 18 feet wide, 35 feet long, with room for four cars. And it does not connect to the rest of the parking, so that you wouldn't get any sort of drive-through parking mm -hmm. from A Street. But just those two cars or four cars that they use it in tandem would be off of A Street. Um, and that, that allows us to have about 16 feet, I think it is, to the right of the, of the spaces off of A Street for landscaping between us and the neighbor that's to the right of us on A Street. I think it's number three A Street. Uh, so we have a, a lot of planting space there to kind of screen the parking. Um, and then the parking that's adjacent to that, uh, there's a, a buffer of about 13 feet of planting between the sides of the cars and A Street. Uh, again, we're trying to kind of provide landscaping to screen the parking as much as we can. Um, so I hope that everyone has a chance to look at this at the landscape plan and see what we've done in terms of plantings um, throughout the site, but particularly along the roads to try to hide the parking as much as we can. Um, so this was clearly a case where really there was no choice but to locate the parking between the building and the street. There just isn't any other land. Um, We've provided uh, about 60% more parking than is required by the zoning bylaw. The zoning bylaw would only require one space per bedroom, which is eight spaces. And, uh, and then we've just sort of improved the flow and, and moved the bulk of the flow onto Cedar Street instead of on A Street. Uh, and then added the, the landscaping uh, to sort of improve the appearance as much as we can. Um, so bottom line is we're, we're hoping very much to sort of listen to and respond to all of the comments that we received in previous discussions and uh, uh, take it from there, I guess. If there are any questions, I'd be happy to take them or to refer them to the uh, members of the team here. So we, uh, we will definitely have questions, but first we sort of introduce it, introduce it and then we are going to ask the principal planner for her comments. Um, that was very in-depth, so it covered some of what I was going to say. Um, but as a note for the board, I know the ZBA is really going to be looking for the board's feedback on your thoughts on the, the use in general and any comments we can provide to them before the next hearing. Um, so I'll be writing those down. And also I was thinking about maybe a joint site walk with the ZBA, um, if that's something we want to talk about before the end nice. of the hearing. So I thought that might be fun. <laughs> um, but I did want to note, um, and you may get into it, Muriel, when we get to beta, but as noted in the memo, a, a large portion of what BEDA is reviewing, what the board is really looking at is landscaping. Um, and so BEDA has not provided a review until the landscape plan comes, which came in today, um, which is at the end of the packet you guys just got. So that will now go to BEDA, um, but BEDA has not reviewed anything until they get that plan. So hopefully for the next one. Okay, thank you. Um, so we do not have the, the next item would be typically the beta review, and that's pending, obviously. Um, planning, boards, planning board members and the public have an opportunity at this point to add to the outline. So does anybody on the board have um, a... So I, sorry, I don't have the outline. I have to look at it, but does it have stormwater on it? Oh, I'm sorry, you don't have the outline? Oh, okay, thanks. I just don't have it in front of me. Uh, it does not have storm so water. I don't water think it does. I was just nothing's thinking. triggered that would have an entity to review and approve the stormwater changes. It, the board is happy to discuss it, but conditioning it and uh, permitting it under this is not in the board's purview. Well, it just seems like a lot of non-porous <laughs> surface to not have a stormwater plan, and there's a comment comment from the DPW that it cannot impact the roadway. And that yeah, so that's <coughs> a majority of the. I would support an item on the outline in, to David's point that we discuss stormwater runoff per the DPW chief's yeah, concern. absolutely. So, right. So, we have to satisfy the DPW in that. Yeah. yeah. Um, snow storage. Should we do stormwater and snow storage similarly? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Anybody on my left have additions? Oh, yes. Okay. I thought you meant your other left. 
<laughs> Do I only have one left, actually? Solar panels. Yeah, just why don't you just go through the normal routine? Solar panels, sidewalks. <laughs> Okay, Trees. Yeah, I should just. I actually was going to say solar panels. <laughs> I like it. Okay. okay. And the historic characteristics of the neighborhood. <laughs> we are starting yes. to show ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Should, yeah. Should, we, should we throw in bicycle safety? I was just yeah. going to say bicycle. Throw in, yeah. Hold on. <laughs> uh, solar panels, um, historic. We don't actually need bicycle safety, but I would recommend pedestrian uh, safety, just in particular yeah. based on some of the butter's comments. Mm -hmm. And there was a, oh, oh sidewalks. You can put those two together, pedestrian safety, pedestrian safety. safety slash sidewalks. Right. sidewalks yeah. mm -hmm. Anybody else want to add to the outline on the board? Um, and how about members of the public? Well, we do need to just have a little space of members of the public. At this point, we're adding to the outline that we use when we, um, when we go through the hearing. So does anybody from the public have any additions that they want to make to the outline at this time? Topics that we need to discuss. You do, ma'am, you do need to come forward to the microphone. And please introduce yourself and then your, your addition. My name is Alice Carroll. I, I live at 3 A Street. I'm the immediate abutter. Mm -hmm. um, we share a property line. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're, you're asking about adding the planning, I, I'm not sure what you mean. I have comments about the planning itself, but I don't know what you mean about it. Yes, so fair enough. So do you have a copy of the meeting outline agenda? No. That should have been made. There, there are copies over there. And so we just want to make sure that if you have particular concerns and comments or subject matter areas, that we add them to the outline. That's what we're doing at this point. We can take a couple. I do, I do have Thank some, you. just glancing at this quickly. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the rendition that's been submitted for the new design, um, at the last meeting, the abutters weren't represented on the rendition, and today they're not either. And I think you need to see how close my property is. Um, if you look at the northeast corner where the parking is, and where the plan for um, snow, we're dumping snow. Mm -hmm. uh, one, two, three, four alternative parking spaces with entry from A Street are immediately under my bedroom window. Mm -hmm. um, immediately next to my house. Mm -hmm. The area for snow removal and for dumping snow which I assume would be done by a plow with the beep, beep, beep that makes a lot of noise, is also going to be right under my bedroom window, right next to my house. Where is the snow? I, I am here without my, my cheaters. Where's it going? Yeah. It's going in the front spaces of one and two and the front spaces of eight and nine. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're actually losing four spaces if you have snow. And also, uh, landscaping is going to take under consideration. Some landscaping areas will have ground cover, which we can put snow in also. Okay, so we'll definitely be talking about snow. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right. um, and even though those four spaces that are drive-through, they're just alternative spaces, people are, are going to use them. We've got eight tenants there. I'm assuming each of those eight tenants has a family member or friend, potentially a roommate. We hope so. Um, yeah. 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 Um, doing the math. Um, really, it requires 16, not 13 parking spaces plus. So the, the question remains, where does your overflow go? Um, we also have a current pro problem on A Street where people are coming down Main Street, cut the wall cut, and come down A Street. It's the new highway, and it's constant. This is a small street with no sidewalks, with older, older folks living there, people with young children, we already have a problem with uh, traffic on the street. I'm appreciative of the fact that some of that parking has been moved, but we're still going to have people coming through, cutting down Wall Park. So we're, we're going to talk about it when we get to parking. For we're going to we're going to talk about it for sure. Is there another topic that you want to make sure we include on the agenda? Well, I don't know what uh, a basement trash area. Uh, I'm that and how that's regulated by the health department. 
time, but I'm a little concerned. They'll be next door to something that is going to have trash dumped in the basement. I, I know it's not going to be dumped. It will be cleaned in some way, but it will be sitting there. Okay, we will certainly talk about the dumpster first. I, 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 I am immediately attracted to the idea of no dumpster, but we will uh, definitely talk about that. And, yeah. and, and this drawing was done by Carl. We took measurements to show your, your house mm -hmm. positioned against the corner of this house. So, so ma'am? And this also shows the planting bed between uh, and Excuse me. That's okay. So we're going to talk about it completely, and we have to talk about it in a way that the board and the, the audience here and the audience at home uh, hears the whole discussion. Okay. All right. Very okay. Yes. Just sorry, in support of the woman that's just speaking now, do we have uh, a line item for a dumpster slash trash to talk about? No, I, I think we that? do now. Can yeah. That, please? And I, I, I did. I did put a little note over here, no tra town trash pickup. And also, I, from hearing her concerns, maybe we can have a light item uh, number of parking spaces. So well, it is, it is, yeah. I'd just like to call yeah. it out. That's, it's a, I know, I understand, a parking, the whole thing, I understand the whole yeah. thing is about parking, but okay. just to call it out. And, and traffic on A Street, it's not on the list. And then I'd, I'd like to add waiver requests. Hold on, uh, oh, okay, hold, huh. mm -hmm. wow. Waiver requests, traffic on requests. Um, a number of parking spaces and uh, parking on A Street. Tra traffic on A Street. Traffic on A Street. Can I also make one more comment that in the winter there's no, obviously, no parking on the street. So my question will also So be I, that isn't necessarily obvious to me. Is that town-wide? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. We, we would have the old, old cars park. Okay. What are we learning as we go? I think for now that's all I have to say. Okay. Yes, welcome. Tom Smith, 22 Walcott Street. I'd like to bring up the, um, the point that every house in the neighborhood, for that whole residential neighborhood, has a minimum of uh, two spaces for their cars. Uh, for me, I have a hundred spaces, but um, I feel that anybody visiting there is going to be parking on A Street or B Street or even Walcott Street, you know, in the summer and uh, when there's not a band. And there's no band during the daytime. They can park there during the daytime. But to have cars lined up the street that are visiting this place is, is going to put a burden on all the neighbors because you know, they have spaces for their cars, and they probably have one extra space for people to visit them, but everybody visits, and uh, they block that street, and that street is dangerous now. And uh, I'm wondering, is the requirement for parking two spaces <coughs> per unit, I mean, one of 1.3 spaces per unit for this gentleman, uh, is that just for apartment buildings? Because Every house in town <coughs> has spaces for more than two cars. Hmm. What is the parking requirement? Pulling it up there now. So I want to say something. Um, I actually would kind of like to, um, and it is not always received favorably by an applicant, so I don't mean it as negative. But I would, I think that this is this conversation about parking is an important one for us to have on, on all sides. I'm actually not overly in favor of paving every inch of a piece of property to just make parking spaces, and I'm more in favor of flexibility in that regard. Um, but I don't, I don't have any professional experience or background or whatever, so it might be worth making sure we have a full conversation on parking requirements when we know them. We can put, just put it on the agenda. I thought in the memo it was one per bedroom. Yeah. I did see one per bedroom, but I don't know. And this is an unusually small number of bedrooms per unit. There's only one bedroom per unit, right? right? Yeah. So Hold on one second. Or just I'm sorry, apartments. Eight just apartments. Mm -hmm. Mr. Foise, I'll come back. Everybody write down their thoughts if. Rob Foise, 25 Chamberlain. I'm wondering if there's a place on the outline for how does a development 
um, work to accomplish the master plan goals. Okay. Just as I mean, there there are a number of things in the land use goals, housing, residential develop, economic development, that I think apply to developments, and I think should be considered as part of the outline. It's actually an excellent idea. I appreciate it. I, I might make a point that that might be too general that we should bullet some items of the concerns because the master plan is big and if we hit that well I guess we can address it at that point but we should just be more focused okay <clears throat> hold on there's, there's a nice two-page outline of the master plan goals and these I mean it's a it's a nice summary yeah I appreciate it Ron as opposed to the yeah whole thing yeah mm -hmm. Mr. Hold on, hold on. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to talk. Yes. Mr. Chair, I would like to add um, on there, if I may, curbing. Right? So based on some of the visuals, I'm not sure what curbing is there. It might be under landscaping. And I do think, and, and George, you touched on it, that it wasn't necessarily part of this, but stormwater management. Because while it doesn't appear on some of the visuals, this is the start where 85 starts going down. Mm -hmm. And you've got a fairly large parking lot here where I think a lot of that water is not hitting an impervious surface. And it's going to start leaching down toward 85. I'd like to see where that goes. It's a slope. There's a lot of runoff there currently. Yeah. yeah. All set. So what size triggers stormwater management? Is there a... Any stormwater time? management is every developer's responsibility. Oh, okay. So, you know, everyone has to keep their water on their site. Okay. And then we, we so are, we you know, left to deal with it if it doesn't happen. You know, just one follow-up comment? Yes. A lot of discussion. Um, I think only the few of the board members were there with the uh, Legacy Farms when Roy took us on that walk and showed us uh, impervious or pervious sidewalks where he poured a water bottle on the sidewalk and it drained right through. So, Mary, you had made a point about other options. So that's yeah. something we can Yeah, yeah more state-of-the-art options. Mm -hmm. Really good point. Madam Chairwoman? Yes. Can I just make one comment? I, and and I, I think it's important for people that are concerned about the, the parking requirements. Uh, you know what? I have to just okay. <laughs> open and continue. Um, so there's been a request for a continuance for our continued public hearing for Whisper Way, which was supposed to start at 9. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and when will they be going? Uh, he requested December 17th, so we have Buckland and Leonard at 8.30. Um, so I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, continue the public hearing, the continued public hearing on Whisper Way to d December 17th at 9.15. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Gary. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Parking. So for people that are concerned about parking, I just think it's worth clarifying, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I mean, our job here is to interpret uh, the how this development conforms to the bylaws. Um, if you have concerns about the bylaws, there's another process, the Zoning Advisory Committee. And I say this because they last Monday they had a meeting looking for public comment and there were a total of two things that were brought up by public comment. So just from a process perspective, I understand the concerns, but if, you're, if, it, if it is a concern, then that's something that needs to be brought through the Zoning Advisory Committee and a zoning bylaw change um, requires, uh, requires it to go to town meeting. So a little bit of information from our process perspective. Yes. Uh, in response to Mr. In support of Mr. Poise's comment earlier, in response to David, um, the there are a lot of good things we can remind, remind ourselves about each project by looking at the master plan. It's a two-page thing. So, um, one of the things that the developer is doing uh, is one of our I, one of our things we're trying to support is more affordable housing, and that's in line with our with our master plan so i support that we're adding it to the outline okay i do too i think it's a great idea um i have a question about uh handicap accessibility ada accessibility um and make sure that we we're speak to that we're handicapped accessible in the building front and rear yep entry yep and we'll talk about that but i want to make sure that we fully address it uh, when we talk about the parking mm -hmm. <clears throat> Um, I'd also like to make a comment that um, personally, this is just me personally, <clears throat> I appreciate an innovative look that um, 
seems to me at the outset, this is the first I've looked at it, to be very respectful of um, the surrounding area. Um, I happen to have a son, a daughter-in-law, and a two-year-old grandson who live in a 600 square foot apartment in Westboro that's walkable. They park behind each other just like you envision here, um, and they, they love it. Um, and it's a wonderful way for them, uh, for them to have been able to establish themselves. They're both teachers, so they're not making millions, but they're making a difference every day. Um, and it's, uh, I really appreciate um, the opportunity to have a conversation about something that is a little bit, a little bit different that has, um, I think, a thoughtful vision behind it. So I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I wanted this, to this is my passion now, and this is the only type of housing I want to build now because this is what we need in our mix of single families and big, huge mansions. So I'm, I'm planning to find other, maybe not in Hopkinton, but this is my, my thing. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to live in a small space. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I just want to agree with Muriel because I, I have three daughters that are just graduating college around that age and this is ideal for that type of thing. So I, I applaud uh, what we're trying to do here. But we do have some challenges that we'll have to work yes. to make this work, right? I think we all like the concept, so we got to. It's going to take us some time. No, so I know. Understand the difficulty. And I think that I think that any time, um, and I have no idea how this goes, but I think that any time that you break ground and you think about things a little differently, um, it's never easy to be the first one to do it. So um, you know, hopefully, we don't. This process isn't, you know. Uh, more onerous than it has to be, um, but I get that there are challenges as we as we look at doing things that are new and different. Um, and that's actually Mr. Foise came up with his comments. It's one of the my passions in the master plan is to to link to more affordable and thoughtful um, houses. And why I brought up the question about the parking because I also think about <clears throat> the ways that we do want to increase vibrancy in the downtown, and part of that is is where do we put people's cars when, when they, if they do come to us, um, without necessarily paving over the entire downtown to do it. But that's my little philosophical And bike path moment. out to the train, maybe on 85? Sure. Uh -huh. part of, is part of that just developing? Yeah. <laughs> We'd be thrilled if you want to do that too. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be thrilled if you want to do that too. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> um, so I think we have added to the outline. Um, I, I feel like, um, well, I'll put it up to the board. Do you want to like push through the outline a little bit or wait for beta um, first? I'd like to wait for beta. I, th I think we should schedule a site walk with ZBA too to see this. Oh yes, of. let's do that. Um, I have a tendency to want to wait for beta as well. Um, when might we site walk? Maybe we can pick two dates that way from the ZBA. We can't do that actually because the public needs to know when we're doing oh, yeah, it. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Yeah. But very thoughtful of you. <laughs> When does the ZBA meet? 12, uh, <coughs> the meeting is on the 12th? 12th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after both meetings and then before yeah. the 10th. Does the, fifth, the December 15th work for you? To have us out for a site walk? Yeah, uh, for what? what, what a site walk. We go out and visit. Walk we walk about. Yeah, sure we'll actually see it. We, oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so both boards are invited. It's not a posted piece of the public hearing. There's no uh, substantial discussion. The public is invited, certainly. Um, there's always kind of a, a delicate balance of we want vibrant conversation, we want to hear what people have to say, but we don't conduct any of the uh, formal parts of the hearing when we're out tromping around the site. So say nine o'clock. Because yeah, if we don't okay. do it, then it's right. after the holidays, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that works for me. But may I ask where we should park? <laughs> a Street. A Street. On, 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 on you know what? Let's park. Let's park at Dennis's and walk down. He'll love that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I was no. kidding. 
question about process. What time is this meeting going to? I didn't check it. I'm just, because you were talking about whether we wanted to talk about, no. Yes, whether we wanted to press ahead. Well, we, we, could, we could also, my suggestion would be maybe some more general questions because it seemed like people had some questions and concerns. Maybe yeah. they wanted to make a point. Um, yeah, uh, and you know what? We can have the public's comments more generally rather than just specifically right. to the agenda to start. Do we have a time on the sidewalk? I'm sorry. Nine, I said nine. nine. Does that work for everybody? Okay. Um, uh, this is to might be tough. Nine. Wait, I will not be there. Let's yes. Ask one you may come right ahead. <coughs> have a definite snow removal plan because that lot filled up in one of our good storms, and they have no place to put the snow. We do have snow removal on, on the outline, so we will be talking about it for sure. But they, they have to have a plan because they're going to ruin their landscape if you just push in all the snow. Okay. You know how that gets. I do. Does it snow around here? <laughs> and my landscaping takes a hit every oh, single time. <laughs> um, so I would like to specifically invite the public, if they have any initial comments or concerns, this would be a good time to come forward, introduce yourself at the microphone, your address, and what your comments or thoughts are or concerns are in general. Come right forward, ma'am. So I just uh, started out by telling you that renters are in my family, right? So get two left. One of one of those renters is teaching your kids at Hopkins yeah, School. I you. And I okay. Have renters well, and I've had family members that are renters, and we're responsible people. Um, and without elaborating, that property at 18 Cedar Street has a very bad history in terms of transients and renters going in and out of there. And that's what another thing the neighbors are responding to is we just experienced that for many years and we're very worried. Who lived um, there before? Who was there before? Hard to say. It was owned single, by... Single family home? Um, so, the, so I was told. But it was never the same car in the driveway twice. Um, there were all sorts of strange people coming in and out all the time. Groups of people coming in What made them strange, ma'am? Um, it looked like to me and to some of the other neighbors, it looked like people that were in motorcycle gangs, things like that. So I'm going to ask you not to go there. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, just, but I'm just saying that we have a history mm -hmm. and, and there's a reason that we're concerned. I'm, I'm not at all against renters. I've been a renter. I've rented for many years um, and most renters are responsible. But I know that the owner of this property... I'm not going to say it twice. We're not going to have that conversation right now. Is there any other concerns? Um, only that this, this is going to create more noise and more traffic, and that's what, that's what we're concerned about. OK, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yeah. Yep, I'm, I'm going to come to you. No, I will. Mark Foisy, 25 Chamberlain Street. Uh, I'm also a member of the Chamber of Commerce, and the downtown business area is very critical for the lifeblood of the town, yeah. and population density is critical to businesses that are up and down Main Street. And this type of high density is gonna be helpful to, to attract businesses to come and locate there. Many of you know there are a number of vacant buildings already on Main Street, so we need, we need help. Exactly. Thank you. Yes, Francis. Um, to the chair, what is the size, the actual physical size of the building? I tried to look in there and I didn't see it through some of the. Uh, you mean the picture? Yeah. 
I could answer that question. The footprint is uh, 2,977 square feet, call it just under 3,000. And uh, the, the second floor and the first floor are essentially the same square footage. And there's a basement, mostly unfinished. So the uh, so-called living area of the building would be a, um, a just under 6,000 square feet, 5,973. So do you know what the, the dimensions of the footprint are? The dimensions of the footprint. square feet, so say 40 by 60, um, 50 by 50 approximately. Yeah, I, I guess I uh, could not answer that question specifically without looking at the drawing. Oh, I, actually I can. Uh, 55 feet, four inches on, along the Cedar Street uh, dimension and 50-ish um, feet the other direction. Thank you. <coughs> it looks like. Through the chair? Yeah. Close to square. I have a couple questions. And, well, first I'll start with a comment. It's great to just put a face <coughs> to a project and then that you're an independent person putting this together, which I think is very important because you get feedback and you hear it, and, um, and that's important. Uh, we, you shared your vision, and um, that's, it's, good to, you know, it's good to put a face to a project. Um, is this a wood frame building altogether, or is it a steel frame Correct. too? Wood, wood, wood frame. Uh, would there be any advantage to doing a steel frame in underground parking, uh, financially or structurally, where it might be a, a uh, no, I, cost effective? We've, we've discussed it, but uh, I did not choose to fill the basement with cars. Um, uh, I suspect it would be cost prohibitive. We didn't do a, a design and a cost estimate or anything, but um, we both have some, ex at least I think you do, but certainly I have some experience with that in urban areas where, because of land values and so forth, that's kind of the only thing you can do. But it's, it's quite a project, and you still need a ramp going down, which takes a lot of space so that the slope isn't too great. And uh, so I, uh, we did not pursue it in any detail, but intuitively it just didn't seem like it would it'd be the right thing to do. Last comment. Mm -hmm. I used to live in Brookline and Arlington towns with stricter parking regulations, and our landlords always had side deals with the local businesses for stormy weather and different circumstance guests coming over, uh, where they would have overnight parking at businesses. And there's several businesses downtown with parking, uh, and a post office. Well, uh, the different, the different. <laughs> no, but the the new the new building on Walcott offers a lot of parking around it. So, so perhaps yeah. uh, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Nealon's connections uh, could help you uh, maybe arrange some excess overflow parking situation. I think it's a good idea to think about for sure, is seeing what is uh, available to you to leverage mm -hmm. potentially. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else at this point? I'll throw the, the blank space. Sure. Um, so one of the concerns I had since this building is um, <coughs> concentrating downtown and access, uh, pedestrian access to downtown. Mm -hmm. that, that I don't think there's a sidewalk on that there section, mm -hmm. but um, in looking at the layout, it seems like um, walking along, I don't know the streets, but the inner street there. Cedar? It's, it's, it comes, Cedar. No, the one that comes up through the middle of downtown. Cedar. 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 No, not Cedar. Cedar's the busy one. Walk up. Walk up. Oh, oh. So okay. as a valid option gotcha. for pedestrians to walk up to the yes. downtown area, I think that way. It's just a comment that I think that would probably work. I don't know if anybody has any feedback yeah, on that. Hey, Tom, I have to have you come forward awesome. if you're gonna. People at home can't hear you. I don't think they do have sidewalks from Cedar Street from A Street all the way up to downtown. Oh, they do. They do. Oh, okay, great. Thank you. Elise Mihailovsky, I live at 19 Walcott Street. And I just want to say I really appreciate the adjustments you made to the parking since the last time I saw it. Um, I understand it's not something that might be able, anybody might be able to do anything about, but I am concerned about the parking. Um, just, I believe Tom already mentioned, most of the houses in that neighborhood only have spaces for one or two cars. So already, there's already a lot of off-street parking on A, B, C, and Walcott Street. And Thanksgiving, for example, the street 
was crowded and it was all just from the homes. So then in one of those home spaces, you add in you know, eight units, and I assume in a town like this, everybody who's living there has a car, or at least their guests who are coming to visit them would have a car, because there's not really public transportation to get here. You're just gonna add more parking. Um, that was one. Number two, um, there's a lot of green space that I see on your drawings, which I love, because I bought my home <coughs> as a new person to the town. I bought my home as an investment, and I love to see anything that would make nice changes or beautiful changes to the neighborhood. The only thing I'm concerned about is these houses are all made out of wood, and they are not noise proof. And I see a lot of grass, and in my mind, I just hear lawnmowers running all day long, and I have a small baby at home who any drop of a pin doesn't let him sleep. So I'm very worried about noise. He will sleep in. one day. Just one day. He will. When he's 25. It's going to be a Ground cover. Okay, so there won't be a lot of work. The first plan had grass, but this plan is not. We have ground cover and bushes. So I just want to remind you that we have to work all comments through me. That's all right. Okay. And. Um, Oh, my, my last question was where A Street and Cedar Street go, um, are you going to have a raised curb there? Because there's already a lot of cut through traffic, like one of my neighbors had already mentioned. And a lot of times when I'm pulling into the street, it's not a very wide street. So when you have someone coming out really fast trying to quickly <coughs> avoid that traffic light and cut through onto Cedar Street, and you're turning in, sometimes you, you're almost hitting each other. So if there's any way in your plans, if you could maybe, I don't know, widen the curve a little or something. Just a thought. <coughs> Thank you. Just as a follow-up to that, I did drive by the site tonight. Yeah. And I ended, or this afternoon, and I ended up coming back out A Street to get onto Cedar Street. Mm -hmm. And it is quite narrow. I'd be mm -hmm. interested to find out exactly how wide the road is there, but it is, it was challenging because somebody was turning into the road. So. I, I may have cut that corner a time or two myself. <laughs> it is a tiny little road. It is. Yep. I'm concerned about the overall size of the project on the size of the lot. Um, I'm concerned that it doesn't have a standard setback that's typically 30 feet. Um, and I'm just wondering, how did you derive the, the size of the pot, did, did size of the lot and the size of the building, um, is it what, you, what would be economically feasible? Is it driven by the fact that it's both residential and business? Um, could you speak a little bit to that? Um, yeah, because it, it, it's just, um, it seems like a large structure, um, I think in what some of the neighbors may be responding to, is that they have these cute little um, cottages, essentially, on the street. And I'm just concerned that it may be sort of overwhelming um, in size in relationship to the rest of the properties. I, I, I just want to interject that my house is on Cedar Street. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the streetscape on Cedar Street, you'll see there's another eight bedroom apartment building also already at 12, mm -hmm. at 12 uh, Cedar. And the homes are of various sizes, big, small, and, and they're not like A Street. And this space is Cedar Street, so I think, my, my opinion is that it fits better um, at the size it is. It's, it's very consistent with the larger homes on Cedar Street. But so and then speaking to the setback, mm -hmm. you know, typically the, back, the rear setback is 30 feet. Um, mm -hmm. Where did the, is it because it's partially business that it changed to 10? I think it might uh, be 10 I in could the downtown. An, I could answer that. Right. I think it might be 10 feet in the downtown area. Uh, 10 feet. Um, right. The, the way the zoning bylaw is written, as I understand it, is um, uh, it's in the business district, which um, has a setback limit of, I think, 5 feet from the front property lines and 20 feet from the back. I'm not sure about the back. However, for residential use, you apply the uh, setback requirements for the RA residential district, which is uh, 40 feet from the front, or in this case fronts, because we're on the corner, and 10 feet on the sides, and there's no rear. So if we 
just calculate the buildable area, it would be 40 feet back from Cedar Street, 40 feet back from A Street, and 10 feet back from the other two property lines. And that gives us sort of a, a zone in which we can build in, in satisfaction of the zoning requirements mm -hmm. for setbacks. Um, the result, and then, you know, the, our building doesn't completely occupy that, but it mostly does. <laughs> And uh, our footprint, as I said, was about 3,000 square feet, which is about 25% of the lot area. And the zoning allows, I believe, 35% uh, lot coverage. So we're under the, the, the limit that's established by zoning. Um, we were interested, sort of the design concept, as I hope I mentioned at the beginning, was, uh, this is Janice's vision, is that is that this is a big house. It doesn't look like a commercial building. It looks like a residential building. And she said, you know, let's make it a, a center entrance colonial, which is a very simple building type. It's, it's pretty close to square. In fact, initially in our designs, it was square. And I kind of wanted to articulate it a little bit just to break it up. And, and that, in, that suggests a very simple diagrammatic floor plan of four units, one in each corner on two floors. It, it just sort of fell into place quite naturally. The, the entrance is in the center at the, at the beginning of a center hallway which goes down the length of the building and there's a back door opposite it. It, it frankly fell into place um, quite naturally as a design in conformance with all the setback requirements and height limits as well. It's, it's less than the uh, allowable height. I have a very, very silly question, but you say you have two fronts and two sides. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you have that. two fronts and two rears? That's the way the zoning is written. I know. Zoning I that, written. Is it? Same yes. Question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at what angle does it become a rear? Because if you t if you turned it any more degrees, the back, the side of that building would be the rear of the building. So yeah, but it's had, it's the lot. It's not. Yeah. The lot. It's not the, the building, building on okay. the lot. All right. It's because it's a corner lot. It's, yeah. it's, it's because it's a corner lot. Corner That's right. Lot. Yeah. Do you have a question? I do. Okay. Um, you had mentioned that there was another um, eight unit apartment on Cedar Street, and I was just looking at Google Maps. Oh. <laughs> um, I was doing the same thing, too. To, 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 to try to figure was, out which was, one it was. I'm I was curious. giving you a hard time about using your phone. I know, in that's, a public that's why I specifically said I was using Google Maps. <laughs> I didn't use that one. Um, so um, I was just curious 12, which. 12, 12 Cedar. It's a four family, but it has eight bedrooms. Oh, okay. A four family with eight bedrooms. Okay. Yeah. It's on a corner. Right, and that's on the other side of. Is it on, on, the, on, it's on the south side of, on the south side of Bay Street? Twelve Cedar. Okay. Oh. Closer to downtown than. This. Yep. This, it's, it's just across A Street. It's yep. Across oh, A Street. Okay. Yep. Two more down. Okay. So that's two a, more down. A four, four, so that's four. where we are. Oh, on two the other side. Two. This is a question for Amy. Is there any historic? It's an old um, to, to mm. the demo of the existing house. So I presume you've already applied for a demolition permit from the Historical Commission? Yeah, we do. I'm sorry. You've already applied for a historic, uh, demo, for demolition I, I, of an historic I church. visited the Historic Society between Christmas and New Year's, I think, or something like that. So um, they... I didn't have anything to show them, so a six-month waiting period seemed satisfactory. The, the six months has passed. Yes. Okay. So they, it was preferably preserved, but they chose to wait the six months. So I guess I was going to point out that I don't think the center entry colonial style is very prominent in the neighborhood. I understand for the purposes of the apartment building that works, but it doesn't really fit, I don't think, with the neighborhood. Um, and I'm curious, where, if, if you didn't have to apply for a special permit for parking, if it was just regular parking that was allowed, where would it be? It would have to be a smaller building and it would be behind? Or where would parking be allowed? Like right now, there's a house on a different part of the lot. Right. Uh, yes, there's a house on the, um, which is non-conforming with respect to setback lines on both the front and okay. the side. And that's in the far uh, northwest corner of the site. And um, they have a sort of a, a driveway in the middle, as you can see on the site plan. Okay. Uh, to answer your question about where else to put parking, um, um, for us to comply with the 40-foot setback on, on the Cedar Street frontage and the A Street frontage um, results in a, a buildable area, which is um, 
you know, not much bigger than the building, and it would have to be a very small building, and then the parking would have to go um, between it and the other two, one of the, one or both of the other two property lines. Uh, the special permit is only for the parking between the building and the streets. If we didn't have to do that, we wouldn't have to do that. Yes, Dave. So I have a suggestion, if you're willing to listen to it. And uh, um, Georgia, could you put up A100, please? Yeah. So before or after? Okay. Yeah, just so. I just want perfect, exactly. So where you have the four cars and the three cars in the bottom right of the screen? Yes. Um, I see a tiny little green belt going through there with a, a sidewalk, and I was wondering why you didn't back up the parking lot, the three parking spaces on the left, and put more of a green area in between the two parking lots. Um, I, I'm sorry, a green area between the... Right there with that small green area. You can make that a lot bigger if you shifted the cars back, the parking lots back to the left. Well, uh, the, so the green area where the cursor is right now is yeah. actually um, is a retaining, top of a retaining wall. Okay. It's only about 12 inches wide. And then to the right of that is a walkway. Uh, what I'm trying to do partly is to separate the four spaces on the right from the three spaces on the left so that it doesn't look like the car. What I was suggesting is more of a separation. So you see the three um, cars on the left? See that uh, parallel lines going behind them? What does that represent? Those just are dimension lines. Yes, I mean, why wouldn't you just use that area as a parking lot? Well, because I need 24 feet behind the cars for maneuvering space before they hit the spaces number three and number four. Okay. Um, and so it's, it's the two parallel parking that's driving that? Two parallel parking spaces, okay. and then there's backup space for the three cars okay. without hitting the okay. spaces. Okay, nice because of the turning. Exactly, the turning radius. Right, yes. yep. You said that wall was... I'm sorry, through the chair, you said the wall was 12 inches wide. How, how much of a drop uh, is it? It's a, it's a low wall. I, I, I'm, I can't tell you exactly, but perhaps our civil engineer could, but I believe it's about a foot and a half. Or, yeah. Our civil engineer, Al Gala, is related that it's about a foot and a half high. Okay. There's, there's a, a slight, you know, the, the site has a slight slope to it. The high point is in the sort of lower right corner, uh, sloping generally towards Cedar Street, and so to accommodate these various grade changes, uh, he's introduced a few low retaining walls, and that's one of them. I think we have to wait for beta, beta, and then get into you know how it, yeah, how it flows. When is our next? Um, so we have the site walk planned. When's our next available time? Um, so I would suggest January 14th. Is that our first one or no? That's our first meeting. It is. In okay. And what times do we have open? Uh, we have Massamac Woods at 745. Um, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. I, just, yeah. I think she said January 14th. Um, oh, <laughs> yeah. I'd maybe give them half an hour. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to continue this. Uh, public hearing to January 14th at um, 8.15. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Could I ask for something to be included in the next packet? Could we get a copy of the decision by the Historical Commission? Yep. Thanks. Does, I didn't even know this. Historic district went all the way. I don't know it's where. It's not in the historic district. No, it's not. It's, it's not. Just, it's how, how old is it? The building. It's over seventy-five years old. Okay. All right. Okay. So we'll see you on the January fourteenth. Oh well, actually, well, we'll, we'll see, see you before that, December right? 15th. December fifteenth. Much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate it very much. Yes, Mr. Kendall. Um, I failed to make uh, in my update from the CPC. I had one other thing that I think is worthy of noting for this group. Okay. Um, they did recommend uh, funding for access and development to the East Main Street Recreation Parcel. Oh. So we had just talked about that at the last planning board. I think at the last planning board meeting about sidewalks and um, they're not funding the project but they're funding $50,000 towards study. figuring out how to access it. 
Awesome. How is that going to affect the um, sidewalk? It's, well, so, so two separate issues, so I, I would be speculating, but I, I think that, that the, the actual design of the access is still a fairly long ways away because they haven't even designed it yet. So um, I think the intention from our recommendations was to complete the sidewalk now and yes. then figure out access afterwards. Yeah, maybe. Through yeah. the chair, is there any thoughts on what type of recreation will go in there? What's that? What types of recreation? Does anybody have any thoughts? Um, that wasn't discussed. <laughs> Just wonder if it's going to be passive or fields. I mean, I, I, the, the, the way the CPC was discussed, well, the way Parks and Rec and CPC were discussed, we're thinking about it, it, it would have been, it would be athletic fields in some okay. capacity. That, that's always been the plan yeah. for that property. I mean, I, but I just don't know yeah. if it's been. It's not, it's not the hockey rink, though, right? No, no. no. That's so not I, in discussion. So I know we have a lot of fields out in the field of Fruit Street, but I think that's kind of far from the center of town, right? Does it sound like we want something closer to the center of town? I actually find the Fruit Street feels very convenient. Convenient. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> and I'm very in favor of when that does go in that we do some kind of traffic mitigation. A light. <laughs> As in something. Wait, for where? Regulate. Something to regulate the traffic on Wait, and where? On East Bay. We when, when soccer's letting out and and during working hours that we we regulate working you know tr um, business hours and we regulate that. Flow. So we are on track to at some point get a traffic light at the Legacy Farms East yeah. Main intersection. Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, Mrs. Chairwoman, um, can we revisit the topic we discussed earlier, Mr. Young? about the uh, 80 acres off of Granite Street. Do you have a map with you? Can you share that with us? And, um, I'm just going to make the point we are leaving this building before 10 o'clock okay, okay. tonight. <laughs> and I was going to save that when I started, but... And that that acreage is south of... So, this way, so everybody, this is kind of fine. 85 is here, Granite is here, South Barn is here, and a few others. Basically, it's the area, think of it this way, between um, Granite. Granite and some of the, uh, like Joseph Street, uh, off of Teresa. Teresa Way. In yeah. that area. So it's a, kind of a big, somewhat of a rectangle with a bunch of yeah. 12 yeah. lots. It's of. like a soldier or something yeah, with a helmet and a backpack. Different lots. Who currently owns like a little drummer boy? It's not the same. <laughs> Are there any Mini Man right. Park? Are there any paper roads in there that we're trying to press? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so wait, Here we Fran, go. when you said Hayden Road, you mean, or do you mean Hayden Road, not Cedar, right? Better say, did I say Cedar? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you for saying that. Yeah. Now to Cornell. Anyone else can we buy it? I would recommend that we support. Uh, this is it, is it a um, an effort by? Open space, or is it effort by halt? It's halt. <laughs> we, we, as open space, are just supporting the halt initiative for that to go to the CPC. I would like to recommend that the planning board support that as well. Long legs. Is there? I don't know if there's precedent for that. Well, I, I don't mind supporting something, but we'd have to know a little bit more, I think. Yes. But, but uh, in general, to... I'm a big you know fan of I think preservation. We're later on this week. Um, once I find that date confirmed, I'm more than happy to share it with this group. I feel free to come to an open space committee that's uh, really... Okay. Well, awesome. all these college students, I might have an issue with financial support, but emotional support. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you have half the college students that I've had, so I just, Literally. you know. <laughs> um, I will follow Mary. So I have looked up some more of my notes from um, oh, the Zach, and you so and and Georgia was I'm right sorry that, to spring that, on that you, one so. of them. That's quite all right. <laughs> that um, stone walls was was one of the um, one of the items that had been brought up as a possible Zach discussion, and this is a general bylaw around the scenic roads. So it is not a zoning bylaw. So technically not <coughs> in Zach. So that one we need clarification on. We, we will talk about it, but it would not be a proposal for a change in a bylaw for the zoning bylaws. Okay. Second one, um, definition of sidewalk and the design and construction standards. There is um, a non-zoning related reference for the rules and regulations <coughs> relating to subdivision land. Um, so it would affect planning board. 
but it is rules and regulations. It is not zoning bylaws. Again, just need your clarification, the board's clarification on whether or not you would want Zach to spend time on that when it would be a proposal to change to rules and regs. Granted, um, from what I, I remember from talking to Georgia and Elaine is that that would be a yeah. vote. You know, if we propose some changes, then it would be a vote by the planning board yes. whether or not to adopt it. it wouldn't even go to town, town meeting. Um, so that's, that's that one. And then there's the third one on paper streets, clarified definition of paper streets. Again, it is not a zoning bylaw. It is a rules and regs relating to subdivision land and it's adopted by planning board. And so any changes proposed, any, if we, ex, you know, if the planning board votes on it, it would be that that's, that's the criteria for changing it. Yeah. If it's just definition. Yeah, it's just a definition. If if we yeah, if we just have so a paper street is defined by Mass General Law, right? Yeah. There's is it, there's really no I mean, definition. Because, in, well, it's because it's before zoning, right? So before, are there paper streets after towns adopt zoning? Uh, yeah, because the developer could, it could be on a an approved subdivision okay. plan and it's never built. Um, but to kind of piggyback on that, which is something. <coughs> I may talk about down the line is clarifying the regulations for paper streets. So like this process we're going through with Buckman right now, we have no regulation in the zoning bylaw that says this is the process, this is what needs to be submitted. So right. formalizing that in the bylaw is a long-term goal. I think that would be amazing, actually. I didn't think we were allowed to create any more paper streets at this point. You're still allowed to create them? Not on purpose that I know of. I, the but only instance I could think of is well, that could be part of their outcome is that we don't create paper. We could have a zoning law that we so, don't yeah, create so paper. So for streets. the remaining paper streets. So if you had a subdivision that was approved and not built, what's the like term limit on that? That's a good question. Well, Stony Brook. I thought it was exactly five years. Situation. I think it is five. It, there's some years. Or is it eight? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty uh, sure it's, it's five. Like, five. Stony Brook was approved in the '90s, and then it got half built, and the other half was never built, and it got extended by. <coughs> the Patrick. Oh, the amendment. Yeah. So, so once you once you break order. ground, the timing changes. Okay. So as soon as you break ground, you get a you get a extra something. You get more time. Well, they got they got some official extent. They're still building. So. Yeah. So my my chairperson said we'd be out of here by quarter of. But to that point, point of so, point of order. So can we to, can we add to these leave. items? <laughs> to a future yes. meeting as a agenda yes. because I have a lot of questions and concerns. Uh, and I think that it's sort of rich conversation. I yeah. think that we have sort of stumbled upon a lot of yeah. what the kind of work that we'd like to be doing is the planning versus the regulating. Can we right? do that now? What was that to add what to? to these, well, yeah. for sure it sounds like we have two um, zoning regulations that would yeah. like to be opened up to maybe not just subdivisions, but the whole town. The three things we're talking about here. Okay. Yeah. So that, okay. I, I want to add another thing before Mr. Paul pulls the plug. Before you switch it, though, should we can we schedule it now or should we do it in the future? Okay. So uh, what I'm hearing is item. that you do not want. Okay. At least two of them are related to regulations for subdivisions. The other one is a general bylaw yeah. on scenic roads. Okay. So. For the two of them related to the subdivision regulations, you would say you're saying that you don't want Zach to. To no, deal no, no, no. We're saying we want to discuss this further. He, want, he wants to discuss it further before, yeah. before Look, taking it to Zach. And you keep talking about it too, but it's, these are rich areas of conversation. I mean, I think they, I think they make sense that they came okay. up at your meeting, and it, I think they make sense that yeah. they came up here. And, and it sounds like you didn't need a decision right away, so we have no, some no, no, time we don't, to we don't. It. Yeah, yeah. That's no, fine. I think it's a good idea. Do we have particular time? So. December 17th is, we're done, Whisperway starts at 9.15, so I yep. think that may be a late night. And then we have January 14th, 8.15 is Cedar Street. We could do 15 minute, the first 15 minutes of December 17th, but. That doesn't well, seem so right. I think we, we should just carry them as, as general doing things for when people can. Okay, cancel. do you know that three people right. are talking at the same time? <laughs> we're all sitting at the same table. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, no, he kind of was. He stopped, though. He got, he <laughs> must have gotten my glare, right? <laughs> all right. One, two, three. And I am saying something before we leave, so be mindful. Yep. Fifteen minutes per each conversation, and we divide it up into different meetings. There's your vote. At least a half hour to start one of them. <laughs> 
I was just going to say we put it on the agenda and, and save it for people that cancel. So three different ideas. Their space. Then we'll never talk about it. Well, yeah. So uh, I do want to have a time certain, but it can go on the bottom of the agenda if we have time, right? So I say January fourteenth, a half hour. Okay. Look how she writes when I say. It's okay if I stand. <laughs> okay if I stand. I'm still in session. I'm still in session. Yes. I thought you were going to leave. I'm like, oh. Can, can we put it? Can we put it in the beginning though? We can't now because we've already put other things at the beginning. Um, we can, but we can entertain it at any time, right? So if it's on, and and somebody, <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? All right. Yeah. Well, who's in charge? That's a good question, right? All right. Here we go. We are leaving at ten minutes to ten. Um, I would like people to give some thought. I have owed uh, the school committee in particular, and our school committee liaison in particular, um, some feedback and some response and some kind of process or approach. Um, and, and a couple of us did a little talking with um, Elaine and Georgia and also with the school department but in, in my, ab about how we um, address, measure, mitigate, it's not really mitigate for, but contemplate um, the, the very real pressures on our services with growth, particularly residential growth. So I throw that out there to my board to contemplate how to approach that. And when I think about it, I see you, when I think about it, I want to certainly make sure we're talking to the schools, but we, you know, we see the fire department here um, every meeting, and that's meaningful to me. So we need the fire department and the police department. and the DPW um, engaged in that conversation too, and it would be lovely, and I think important, if we also had some engagement from the selectmen, at least uh, in, a, in a liaison way, but I just want people to be thinking about ways that we might do that, and Mary, you raised your hand. Yes. Um, I actually have had a conversation with, with Elaine and Georgia offline, because you know, there's lots of stupid questions I like to ask when I'm not televised. And <laughs> I, I did that my first year as well. I yes. really found it very helpful. I'm not smart enough to do that. And, <laughs> and um, certainly one of them had to do with you know, the, school, the school getting lots more students, and, and I get, uh, during the campaign, and of course since then as well, um, a lot of people say, why, are, why do we keep building? Why can't you just stop all the building? And obviously there, you know, there's legal reasons <laughs> why we cannot do that, but I asked the stupid question of, is there such a thing as temporary moratoriums on? So it, and, and I actually was, was hoping that maybe a member of the public would bring it up at the Zach Public Forum, which they did not. <laughs> and, um, but that's, you know, it's something that, you know, I think I would, needs I to be at to least discussed yeah. because it seems like that's what people are asking for, even though, <laughs> even if they don't know what the, the legal ramifications general. are, yeah, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was gonna yeah. mention, in the master plan. Oh, wait, plan. hold on. Yeah. I'm coming around. Just when we're considering things, I think we maybe should look at the long-term water for the town and see how that impacts us. Oh, that was the one thing I didn't add to the last one. Okay. In the master plan, we had an action item that I think got lost when Jennifer Burke left and we had the transition um, of, I thought, asking each applicant to spell out the expected number of school children, the amount of fire call, you know, emergency calls. Like. I have found out a fascinating piece of information. <coughs> we are not entitled to predict and plan and know where children live. Oh, okay. But, but, uh, so that's one, that's one thing that can, I said, seriously? And we, but, we know at Legacy Farms because that was part of just the different. Plan. But can we ask the developer to estimate? Or can we guess yeah, to so me based on number of bedrooms? I, I know that we're approaching 10 minutes of 10. One of the things we can contemplate is feedback from a professional consultant right, to estimate what the cost of uh, community services, the, um, uh, that's what we did um, way back in the day for Legacy Farms, that's how that whole host community agreement came forward. Um, and that's an approach, and another approach that we did and have done very successfully over time at different times is, is structured community engagement, the, you know, the charrettes and the, and the um, investment, because what, what ultimately is the problem always is that there is, um, there's tension in the priorities, right? So there's, there's just always this tension. So what, 
what is the priority of Hopkinton today, right? What do taxpayers want to see? Do they want to see a moratorium? You know, when we were campaigning, when we were campaigning, I was, it was it, 10 years after I campaigned for a selectman, it was a completely different answer that was coming from people behind, at, at the doors we stopped at. It's fascinating, right? But it makes sense, but mm -hmm. just you can't get stuck in one mode of thinking. Um, and it may very well be time to have a structured community I would engagement really, effort. I, I agree with that too, but I would just would really like to be able to hand to the selectmen at the end of the year. We approved the following developments and the estimated impact on schools, fire, police. You know, I would love to do that this. too. And uh, so actually, for budgeting, to for budgeting, that they could at least yep. look at that. Yep. And I think that that would be very instructive and very meaningful for the voting public too. I really do, because um, you know we we have to address it. Okay, we're we're at ten minutes of ten. I, I need <coughs> I move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If you have, wait. You have. I'm, I'm, I am really? not. I am not accepting your motion at the moment. You. Really but you have thirty seconds. This board in the previous school committee, the previous version of this board, Fran can probably attest, is that we've worked closely with them about larger pro projects, and our information feeds the statewide system that tells the school system how many students they're going to have. Five, ten years. Okay, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to stop you. I'm going to give you an action item to bring the history on that and understand that that system did not necessarily feed accurate information. So we need to make sure we're open to really oh, think of that. I think they no. do. Quick question. You had an what action item. Bring it forward. When we talk about what would be the fiscal year that you would say? What, what was the beginning of the fiscal planning board year, and what's the end of the? Would you say September to September? Or how would you end it, September? Or Just to the end, term. so that we can give it to them before budget okay. season. Yeah. Okay. What did you say? But that uh, yeah, election, term, election term. But so it, it like the Zach, it may take a year or two if we came up with a plan. It might take a year or two to really have it driving mm -hmm. as useful information into it. Sure. Mr. Trendell, you made a motion. I am now entertaining Second. it. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Any abstentions? And look at that, before 10. Oh. Okay.